So the Lannisters are the most interesting people in Game of Thrones. Don't even fight me on that. Uh, how are you my internet family? Welcome back for another makeup and story time video. This is a celebration, celebratory cup of tea because uh, my book, book is out and loads of you are reading it and it makes me really happy. So I have this whole section in Fully Functioning Human almost to do with body image and my journey with gaining a lot of weight and being the wrong type of skinny. My eating disorders and how I got better and um, I'm making this video now as a kind of condensed version and I guess I wanted to just say that I think I should include a trigger warning here um, for the video, for the book as well. It's it's just a sensitive issue. I've been advised that I should say that to you guys, that if you are dealing with um, stuff and you think that anything might push you over the edge, just be weary of that. Different things affect different people's mental health in different ways, and I'm very aware of that. But um, for those of you who do wanna watch and are interested, I hope you enjoy this. Cheers. I'm just going to talk and if I use anything that you want to know the full name of, it'll be in the description box down below. The day I was told by a doctor that I was overweight and um, borderline obese is literally seared into my memory. And now I have got videos about, you know, getting healthy and learning how to be balanced and learning to cook and, you know, going through that whole journey, um, which was completely separate from what I'm talking about in this video. But it is important that you kind of know that that was where I started off like I was an unhealthy child never ate any fruit and vegetables had no idea what proper food was I uh, didn't like the taste of it to go from being quite a typical child to then being very depressed age 19 and using food as a coping mechanism and blowing up and ballooning and then having to unlearn an awful lot of habits and stuff um that's where that's where everything I think was kind of born. It's funny how eating disorders can creep up on you when you think you're doing all the right things. Um, well, not funny. Not funny at all, actually. Uh, and it was another YouTuber, actually, Anna Sacone, talked about bulimia in a video years ago. Um, and that was the first wake up call I kind of had that, like, maybe how I felt about food and my behaviors had um taking a turn for the worse my healthy lifestyle um actually ended up morphing into an eating disorder called orthorexia and i didn't i didn't even i'd never heard of that word i literally thought a person with an eating disorder was someone who was emaciated and had anorexia anorexia and then bulimia which is where you um make yourself throw up and stuff they were the only things i ever heard of um, in terms of disordered eating. I'll go into it now, but it's not like I woke up with this one day and that's what you have to realize. These things develop over time and um, it really, it gets to a place though where you're you're consumed. You're completely fucking consumed by um, thoughts of food, calories, measurements, purity, all that stuff. So yeah, orthorexia, essentially, um, I was afraid of sandwiches. I was afraid of, any food prepared by anyone but me. My interest in nutrition turned into me being terrified um, of eating anything that I didn't deem to be completely pure and um, okay to enter into my body. Um, so it, it got to the point where I would only eat fruit and veg, um, but I'd go through phases of having these really weird rules that just did not make sense um, at all, at all. Even looking at any food that was unorganic, I would shudder. Um, any, any food that was in plastic packaging, I thought would kill me. Processed food was literally completely evil to me. I used to go around telling all my family and friends um, what they should and shouldn't eat, even though I had no qualifications at all. Even, I was reading an awful lot of all this conflicting information about nutrition and I started following all these um, raw foodists and, and uh, people who literally live to, like their whole life revolves around um, getting food and, and eating food and talking about food and like I got sucked into this vacuum um, where I just, I stopped having a life. Um, I started melting away and I had, I, I'd be on a bus and I'd feel my bones digging into the chair on the seat and um, I felt gross about my body. I, I felt tired, my nails were breaking, my hair was brittle, my eyes were just like bloodshot. The thoughts of going out for food with my family and friends 
um, in like a restaurant filled me with dread. I would have to, I would only go out to eat if I could find an online menu and I could see exactly what was in the food, ingredients, calories, macronutrients. Um, it was just this massive mission for control I think I was on. I just, I wanted, I felt, I felt really out of control in every other aspect of my life. I only realized this in therapy later on, but, um, so much of it came down to that and also um i just wanted to be perfect i wanted a perfect body i wanted to always be perfect and 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 almost feeling superior than everyone else orthorexia manifests in um such weird ways wrong one this one this one i literally remember it, like even the idea of making a, a big fruit smoothie with water the idea of it being in a blender and touching off the blades in the blender I somehow thought that then I was going to be ingesting some sort of, um, I, ju I don't, I don't get it. It was like a monster crawled its way up my nostrils and was just living in my brain, telling me what to do all the time. And I became so isolated, so fucking isolated, like nobody, um, I would try to talk to people about it, but at the time, like I didn't acknowledge anything was wrong with me. I thought what I was doing was right and everyone else was just nuts for, um, you know, <laughs> enjoying eating a chocolate bar and all of this spiraled from me just taking an interest in food and and wanting to do you know better things and eat better things and include more nutritious food in my diet which i i think is a wonderful thing to do now that's like i i eat super healthy but i i i never have anything off limits and stuff but i remember at the time like i didn't know there was anything wrong with me and i i found out you know what orthorexia was and all that kind of stuff i think through people talking about it online this way i'm i feel like this kind of stuff is really valuable and raising awareness on these things because so much of us are going through these things we don't realize but yeah it's very different from having you know being concerned about what you ingest um, and wanting to make good choices that's a good thing it's very different when every waking minute um is centered around that and you your value like how you view yourself as a person is determined by what you did and didn't eat i remember one time pigging out because my body was so starving for for food um and and for variety like i because i was only I remember one time only eating bananas <laughs> and like I was just starving for um you know I was dribbling over meat and stuff like that and um this is where for me a lot of my dalliance into you know like having been a vegetarian and being a vegan for quite a long time um I didn't get into those things for the right reasons I tried to convince myself that um it was for animal rights and things at the time it was not and I can see that now very clearly um, and now I eat very 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 little amounts of animal products I, I call my I like to call myself a reducitarian I try to try and minimize those things but I don't like having things off limits I'll talk about that in a bit because of the recovery part but um, yeah like I was masking an eating disorder behind all these lifestyle choices lifestyle changes um, and I you know, there's loads of different weird rules people make up and give themselves. I went through a lot in therapy to get to the bottom of how this mindset um, came about and how to undo it and, and just embrace food again and, and health and balance and moderation and th those words just didn't exist. I used to like, like wretch when, when people would say, everything's okay moderation I was just like you are an idiot like I was so condescending to people that I love um and like at the time I just don't know how people lived with me I really don't but thank you for everyone who put up with me I I wouldn't be here without you guys I recovered and you know all I thought I did um I remember working I worked as an extra on this tv show called Vikings for like a whole summer and um it was an incredible experience but I definitely think that I was still in the clutches of orthorexia even during that and even when I started my YouTube channel um cuz like on set um there'd be this thing called cake o'clock the vikings caterers would give us all these trays of delicious looking brownies and things I made a friend on set and I I genuinely believe she was going through all the same things as me um, it was unspoken, but the two of us used to egg each other on about like avoiding 
the the treats and like I would just look at everyone in envy they'd just sit there and eat a little homemade piece of apple pie or a brownie not a care in the world and me and her would just be like I would be frothing at the mouth and like I would have um brought in maybe like a little bag of almonds or something like that and and the thing is like the way I view it now is that you live once and if you're not eating those things all the time if they make up 10% maybe even 20% of your diet and they're just like a little treat here and there and stuff like that it's it's completely fine I love the quote apples are good for my body but chocolate is good for my mind Do you know what I mean like there's no denying that that combination of sugar and fat and you know it obviously it's not very nutritious and stuff but it gives especially if you're a child like me like I was a child brought up in a home where food was attached to um everything good every good happy memory I have of childhood is linked in with junk food I don't even like calling it junk food but um and I'm trying to undo that language but uh you guys know what I mean that kind of food um all of that stuff like is so ingrained into me and it's what I lived off most of my life like comfort as well like it's such a huge comfort thing um I don't comfort eat anymore but we're, we're gonna get to that we have to get to the bloody binge and oh my god but yeah like me and this girl used to egg each other on and we just stand there like doing squats and stuff all I would want to do is just have a little bit of a brownie a little bite of a brownie and, and just chill out and can still do squats you know what I mean it's like I had this black and white thinking it was one or the other I was eating completely clean and perfect or I was being terrible and I was gonna get really really obese and die age 25 and that's where issues come in when it's just this obsession and there's like I, I you know I during this whole time I I wouldn't drink alcohol I my social life went to shit when I would drink alcohol if it was a special occasion like if someone was say moving away or um you know it was a big party or something I would um, feel so bad that I would then do purging behaviours like what bulimics do. I would overcompensate by exercising way too much. That ain't good. I was just trying to rid it out of my system. And yeah, like, life was just shit. It was just like a big grey fucking cloud. <laughs> Orthorexia took my joy of food away from me. Um, and it took quite a long time to get it back because coming out of orthorexia and I thought I was getting better and stuff I was you know with the help of a therapist slowly including foods that I'd put off as off limits and um, I was doing well I was not beating myself up and I was learning about why I was having the thoughts I was having and I was actually looking at proper up-to-date nutritional studies and just freeing myself a little bit um, but then what happened was my body jumped in and did what it's meant to do um in a survival state and i'd been starving it for so long and then i was giving it these quantities of food that i'd been missing and stuff but my body was just like eat everything get everything now so i started binge eating a lot very often i don't mean finishing off a tube of pringles i literally mean purposefully going out and, and then this is the thing this is nothing like just overindulging in food um, every day without realizing this is planned planned out attacks on my own body my own digestive system I was like fuck you so god my poor ex-boyfriend was there through all of this and he had to like witness this and deal with it and he was amazing he was so so amazing um with it and and really really did his best to try to help me every few days I'd go to the shops and I would buy enough um foods and I want to say junk food, but I just don't know what else to call it. Like beige food, all of the fried foods that don't have much nutrition and fiber and protein and all the things I need in them. Those kind of foods, the tasty, lovely foods that we all love. It's not like 10,000 calories worth and I would just sit and eat it all, like stuff it all into my face. Um, I would be in agony, but the first time I started binging, I didn't actually even do that. Like I would just kind of I'd have, say, a bowl of cereal after my dinner and then I'd go in and I'd make another bowl of cereal and another bowl of cereal and then all the cereal would be gone. Then I'd start making toast. Then I'd just go through the whole slice pan of toast. Um, I would never do this. I'd never binge eat on apples. I'd never binge eat on lentils. I'd never binge eat on eggs. I didn't, 
like whole foods, <laughs> you can't binge eat them. This is the whole point that we need to realize as a species, if we stick to eating mostly of those foods, we will be fine. Our health will be, will be very nice, we'll be okay. But if you put a giant pizza in front of me, I will polish that thing off. If you give me big tubes of Pringles, um, and as in if I'm only eating those kinds of things with no other good stuff in my system, I will consume all of it, even now. Um, I haven't binged in a couple of years, but oh my God, I can't describe to you how agonizing a binge is and feels like your system shuts the fuck down. Imagine someone just sticking a football inside you and it has nowhere to go that's what it felt like because um when you consume so much so quickly and this is the thing i would always eat it really really fast it's like my my body was starving and and our bodies are designed this way to protect us because they don't want to die and if you are not feeding yourself properly and then you start binging and stuff don't feel bad about it like you have to let go of that guilt because your body's it just means your body's working. You've put it into this state and it can take quite a long time to get out of out of it, um, which was the worst part of it for me to try and accept. Um, when I found out, you know, why I was binge eating, and I was doing this so often, like I would, and my whole life was revolved around it. Like I'd have, I used to, I always keep a journal, but my journals would just be like, if I binged on a day, I would write binge in big capital letters and cross the day off as if nothing else of note or value happened on that day. And that's really fucking sad for me because this is during like the prime of my life. In my 20s, I was in university and I was basing my whole existence around whether or not I binged. And then on the days when I wasn't binging, this is the worst part, when I wasn't binging, I was starving myself, basically. I was I was not eating enough at all and um because I was trying to undo the binge I didn't want to gain back any weight um and this you know this, this whole weight obsession at the time I was quite slim um and I think see this is this is why I'm talking taking you through all this to take me up to the weight training and stuff now because I what during this binge eating stuff I had a horrible um relationship with the gym like can you imagine if you're basing all your worth around this like binging and then you're you're punishing yourself with, with workouts you set foot into a gym it's like going into hell for for a christian it's like literally walking right into hell and that's why i'm so fucking proud of myself that i'm um where i'm at now i'm skipping ahead again what am i like i'm terrible at telling stories i went to the emergency room a couple of times once i brought my dad i remember going with my ex um because because I'd eaten too much and I felt so embarrassed and guilty that I was sitting there taking up the doctor's time when there was people there with injuries and you know real proper things wrong with them that they had no control over like stuff that just happened to them and I was just like sorry I couldn't help myself ate a million cakes <laughs> help me I feel like I'm gonna die and I genuinely did feel like I was gonna die I'm sure you can die if you eat too much food, actually. And no matter how painful and agonizing it was each time to go through this, I would still end up doing it again. It's like, um, it's like I knew what I was doing to myself every time. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever, whatever has to be done. I went into autopilot mode like a robot. Like I literally didn't feel like a human being anymore. And it was so embarrassing. Like the first time I binged, I still remember it. And... I was sat on the floor at the edge of my bed, like on the floor, leaning against the mattress, like, and we were meant to be watching Game of Thrones or something. And I remember my, my ex, like banging the door in and, you know, being like, what's wrong with you and stuff. And when he saw me and all the packets littered around me that I'd gone out to eat. And I was just so embarrassed because it's something that's so difficult to vo verbalize. Even now, even when I wrote about it in my book, like trying to actually get all of the words out about like, what it feels like to be in that space. Like, I wanna make this because I know some people watching this are there right now where that's probably why you clicked on this. You probably saw it pop up and were like, oh my God, like all I think about is, is that kind of stuff. Um, And if that's the case, like, please fucking talk to someone about it. It takes a long time to mentally address the problems and the reasons that, the things that cause an eating disorder and the recovery it's really, really difficult because you have to adjust to 
gaining weight when you've been so scared of gaining weight you have to let your weight stabilize you have to let yourself eat without counting calories and without restricting and um learning how to eat intuitively listening to your body and eating when you're actually hungry not eating when you're not hungry not eating out of boredom all these things are so hard to learn to relearn even if you if you were okay before after you've had that trauma happen to your brain and your body and, and your metabolism like um it's a lot harder for me now to say shift even five pounds than it was for me pre all this eating disorders because it went on for two years two and a half maybe three a long time of me fucking my body around not giving it what it wanted not not treating it well leveling out my system took me the majority of my time on, on YouTube and like a little bit before that and stuff, um, I was still kind of struggling with some of the orthorexic thoughts, but I was generally over binging and all. And I'll be honest, this is why I started my food diary series. And I'm not, I'm not finished that by the way, I've just been very busy with my book launch and making a short film, which you guys will see. Um, but like documenting myself, eating balanced, eating whole foods, allowing myself treats, eating like a normal person, what I counted as a normal, a normal diet, like an average diet, not a spectacular one, but not a terrible one either. Learning how to do that for me was like, oh, so, so scary. And I, I felt like documenting it made it a bit easier. Um, well, it definitely did anyway. And I, I, um, I think I still remember when I realized that I was completely over every all the eating disorders. I think it was one of my food diaries when I went on a trip with a couple of friends and we stayed in a cottage. Remember the one where I bought like a big trolley full of all of this decadent stuff and alcohol and all. And, um, and we were all making each other meals while we were there. And I kind of, it was that year, which I think was 2016, like last year. I think that's when I realized that I was pretty much okay and done with the steps in my ED recovery to be able to um, balance all that out myself and listen to my body. But in the process of doing this, I was eating about, I'd say, if I could guess, guesstimate, and I, you know, I know calories from my time with orthorexia and obs just obsessive obsessiveness about food. Like eating EDNOS is a thing as well, eating disorder, not otherwise specified, I think that's what that means. Um, and I was told I probably had that as well as these other two things and body dysmorphia, which I talked about in another video. Oh, glorious, glorious journey, very happy times. But no, um, what was my point? I'm lost, I'm lost. Oh yeah, so I know calories and um, I think I was eating about 3000 calories a day or 2500, even on days when I wouldn't exercise. And I'm a five foot six lady, I don't need that much food at all. But for that time period I did, I did um, for my mental health to, and for my habits to kind of solidify, you know what I mean? So it was necessary for me to have a bit of extra um, flesh on the body and just to not give a shit and, um, yeah, and I, I, I learned to love my, my body regardless of what it looked like and to appreciate it for what it does for me. I have one eyeliner on, this is ridiculous, I need to do it. So yeah, I was going along like that for ages, for a long, long time. Had no urge to change anything because I got very comfortable in it. And so, and I did always tell myself like, one day I'll get fit, I will get fit before I'm 30 and all this, that and the other, all this shite. And um, then, so two things happened. I found YouTubers who are into weightlifting, female YouTubers into lifting like really heavy weights, um, proper like lifting, like big things, doing deadlifts and, and squatting with big weights on their shoulders and stuff. And I was just like, oh, the, the figures they had, like, the, and, and weight doesn't come into it either, which is so, um, such a nice empowering thought to think that like you're building muscle and becoming strong and not trying to just, get as tiny and teeny as possible, like you're building up a nice big arse. Some of you may have seen me singing the bum song, which I made up on my Instagram stories, where I often share, you know, um, food I'm eating and workouts and stuff, so do follow me. But um, yeah, these people just really inspired me an awful lot to kind of just do it, like just start working on getting fit. And I know it's not gonna be for me, I'm not treating it as like this six weeks to a better body kind of, 
challenge thing. Like I'm not doing it like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going into it very easily. I, I know how I work. I know when I'm starting to get a bit too obsessive with stuff. Like I had a couple of nights where I did notice myself having certain thoughts, like having quite a lot of gurgly hunger and being like, no, don't eat anything and just have a cup of tea instead. And you'll feel better going to bed hungry. And I, I was having those kinds of thoughts, like, or if I was out and there'd be free food and I'd be like, don't have that. And I would want to beat myself up over, you know, essentially I'm trying to eliminate all of that shit. I'm trying to make sure I go really, really easy into this. Um, Just got a year's membership for the gym. So I did just get a month one to try it out first and I loved it. And now I've gotten a year's one. So I know um, I'll have to adapt this around my lifestyle as well because like I never know where I am every week and I'm my hours with what I do is just very bizarre I travel a lot and stuff but yeah no the other reason is the person I'm dating and seeing is super fit and really like dedicated to it um I met him when I was only like I think I was a teen I was definitely like probably between 16 and 18 when I met him and he wasn't like in crazy shape then I don't I don't think anyway I don't remember and uh, we were always with other people and stuff um I was never single at the same time as this lovely boy what did I do but what I really admire with him is just how dedicated he is to like being healthy and like being in shape and he just glows with health like his it just glows out his face and his eyeballs and he's beautiful and um, and yeah, and I know that, I think they say when you really care about someone that the other person inspires you to be the best version of yourself. I kind of feel like that way. Um, he makes me feel that way. He, and he really is so supportive of, of me and with this stuff, do you know what I mean? And he likes spur me on and, and I like that. So I think that, um, I'm in a really good place now to be tackling like doing a proper fitness routine I'm not making promises that I'm going to have this big body transformation in like by Christmas but um I know that I'm going to stick with it and I know I'm going to get there and I'm going to be like yeah yeah but I'd say to anyone in a dark place right now with food and and all that kind of body issues stuff and their nutrition their health and not knowing where to go and what to do and how to start talk to a professional first establish in your brain where you're at why you're there, where you want to be, what you would have to do to get there and accept that it might take an awful lot more time than you're willing to accept right now. It may take years and I and we're in that kind of society I think where we want everything to hurry up and happen yesterday. We have no fucking patience. We don't. <laughs> we just don't. We have everything instant. There was a time in my life where I never thought I would be interested in healthy foods. There was a time in my life where I thought I was going to become obese and stay that way. There was a time when I thought I would always be afraid of bread and always be terrified of eating the same meals as my family and that I'd always have to have a separate dinner from them and that that was my lot in life. There was also a time when I just didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel of binging and I, I figured that I would be stuck in that loop forever. And there was even a time where I figured I would never get all that into um, exercising and that I'd never step foot in a gym again and now here we are so I just hope that this gives you a little bit of comfort in that um, I, I think it's a very normal thing nowadays to go through this journey I don't think my experiences are unique at all I just think uh, I have the balls to talk about it to a camera that's the only difference between me and an awful lot of you watching this so please don't put me on a pedestal and think that um, where I'm at is somewhere that you can't get to and that it's out of reach for you. I know it can be really scary. I know the world is telling us that we have to be this way and that way. Just find a place that works for you. Same way like the last year or two. I've been in my little comfy cocoon of um, eating loads of food, healthy stuff, but loads of food, not really exercising very much. And I felt great. I felt great, I still do, I feel great um, about myself and I know that I can always be better and work harder and do more but I'm never going to let that, I'm never going to sacrifice my mental health ever again in aim of perfection because life's there to be lived, food is there to be enjoyed, 
Um, exercise should be enjoyable. We should love, love it and do it for that rush of fucking amazing hormones and endorphins and stuff that we get after it. Um, yeah, that was my little rant for today. My little chats, my little makeup and story time. If you enjoy these videos and you want more of them, please give it a thumbs up. Please, 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 because that really helps my channel. And uh, comment your experiences with all this down below if you have any. Uh, let me know how you're doing. Hope you enjoy my book, Fully Functioning Human Almost, in stores now. And I'll talk to you in another video very soon. Bye-bye.